Hello, dear. All right, menu and heart. What's up, man? Is there? What's up, dude? Thank you for being here. Dude, thanks for having me, man. It's a. It's, it's been a, a minute. Pleasure. I haven't seen you in a while, man. I know. Yeah, we we see each other at like shows sometimes, but we yeah. run in different circles. I think. But yeah, you're a you're a fantastic follow on Instagram. I'll, uh, can you plug your Instagram real quick for my uh, for my listeners? Oh, right here the camera. All right, sure. Uh, yeah. Why not? <laughs> uh, M H A R T, the number three thousand. That's me on Instagram and on TikTok. Yeah, because uh, you post stand up, but also you just post other shit. Like you'll post like you doing beat, you making beats. Yeah, and like you have this one. I've literally shown this to like twenty people. Uh-huh. You posted it like a, I don't know, I forget when, but you did this like really dramatic uh, song that was it was just like the Lion King song. And you were like, time to check oh. my social media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then like, a shit ton of like special effects come out. Because yeah. I had the phone and it's like this yeah, 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 yeah. seeping Dude, into my face. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh, the things I'm not doing. Dude, it's it's unbelievable. <laughs> I was just like, I couldn't believe how funny it was. And it was just like, really, it was like the, the special effects were sick. Like, Thanks, yeah. man. You're Thanks, a, yeah, I appreciate it. You're a multi-talented individual. I appreciate it about you. Hey, man. Thanks for saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I uh, so I've I've known you for a while just as a stand up, but I actually don't know that much about you. Where are you from? I I was born in the Bronx, okay, but I was raised in Atlanta. Okay, got it. So I was out here and then went to Atlanta. My mom is the Southern one. Okay, and um, and yeah, so I re- grew up in Atlanta, went to college, high school, and all that stuff yeah. in Atlanta. Then I came back to New York. And how do you like Atlanta? Uh, which version of it? Like now? <laughs> any version? Yeah, any version. The per- the place you grew up in and the place now. Uh, Atlanta is, uh, I like Atlanta. I really do. Cause it's like, I, um, I had a different, like the police are different out there. It's like a different relationship. Like in college park, the police officers are black. Yeah. So, well at the time they were black. So it's like you, and they hung out. Right. So yeah. you see them, you say, Hey officer Johnson, what's going on? You say, Hey, what's going on, man? They yeah. stay out of trouble. Like they were okay, yeah. helpful cops. Right. Really? Because black people don't call the police. Sure. So they were like, I was Brother, kick it, have play basketball with him and shit. <laughs> okay, yeah. So that's kind of the good version of policing that people talk about: community yeah. policing, people be in, being embedded in the yeah. places that they police and stuff like that. Yeah, but it was a natural thing. Like I've yeah. seen the in natural where you go right. and you're like, "Hey, uh, who are you giving all the ice cream?" Hello, children. Yeah. It's like, what the, is, it, is it broken glass and ice cream? What's an ice cream? Well, I don't trust. <laughs> yeah. What's happening here? But, okay, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I love the. Uh, it's just, uh, Atlanta has a a good a grip of like community. I, I liked about it. Like That's cool. In, in College Park, you know, you get to know people, and it's kind of like this little these little communities. Yeah. And people are like helping each other and things like that, it's like businesses or if you have a talent thing, yeah. or whatever it is, they're always like here with you. And um, in New York, I feel like New York only. This is my opinion. Sure. I feel like New York has that only because of outside cultures. But the New York culture itself does uh. is, is more everybody's individualistic, everybody's independent. Oh, that's very interesting. So I feel like like with the Spanish community, yeah. very connected. Sure, sure, the sure. The African community, very connected. Right, because they have to because they're yeah they're coming for, from they're place. strangers within the, the yeah. city. Yeah, yeah. And when they see someone else from that country or someone somewhere connected, they sure. instantly grab on. It's like, hey, let me help you. This yeah. is what I found, and this is what I'm doing. Right. You maybe this can help your family. But New Yorkers, like individually, like people that it, it doesn't feel like it's a um, uh, it's community. I guess they have a, they have different forms of it. But from yeah. what I've seen, it's just like no, I do it on my own. It's like okay, shit. Do you feel like that's show business too, or do you feel like that's New York in general? Uh show business. Um, it depends. I feel like it depends on because show business is very individualistic. It is. Only, you know, it you're is. trying to make it, and you're competing with other people. Yeah. Even though people help each other in show business, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... Let's see. Show. Yeah, I feel like it's individualistic, but I think the individualistic comes from the fact that people are pushing the individual... I don't know if this is a word. Individualism. Like, Mm, for example, like... You see a lot of people get on and they're like, yeah, I'm self-made. I did this myself. Sure. It's like, dude, you didn't do that. This, yeah, yeah, you yeah. didn't do all of it. You sure. did have a person that said, hey, I could, I know a person you could talk to. There's there's yeah. always little elements. That, very, yeah, I mean, very few people are truly self-made. Some people yeah. have harder circumstances than others and yeah. have to surmount more obstacles. But everybody got help in along some the way, way from somebody. Even in a small thing of like, like, I, like for example, this comes to my head. I was on the road uh, this year. And I was just doing a bunch of shows randomly here and there. Yeah. And I remember in certain towns, 
you could see the the people that had dreams. Yeah. You could see it in their eyes. You know, <laughs> okay. this is just look at hey, and they would tell me say like, hey, keep going, man. Keep doing it. I'm like, Oh right, yeah. Thanks. It was like you were aspirational to them, kind of. Yeah. Okay. And, and it was like, I'm just doing stand up. Yeah. I'm doing stand up. I'm sitting there kicking it with them, talking to them after yeah. the show. And you could just see like these is morally dudes. It, women would be like, hey, you're doing a good job. But yeah. dudes would be like, hey, man, keep going. Like, oh, that's cool. Like for me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so it's like when I do other things, like if I'm writing something, I'm like, man, this ain't working. Why the fuck am I even. Yeah, that one I got to keep going. That yeah. one dude in Nebraska. I gotta, <laughs> that's funny. I got to do it for Tony yeah. in Nebraska. <laughs> so it's like those little elements, they yeah. push you forward. So that's like a communicative team effort. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's very inspiring. Yeah, yeah that experience is interesting because I do think that happens with dudes at comedy shows, but I've also had the experience where typically older men uh -huh. like look at me when, I, when I'm doing stand-up and they're like, why the fuck would I listen to you? You ever had that? Like old, older men, arms crossed, and in, in, like in the front row, in the front row, bad attitude. Yeah, and usually I try not to look at them. Yeah. But sometimes, like if I'm just feeling like, all right, I'm feeling loose, I'll just point directly at them. Like, yeah. what's what's wrong with you? What happened? Yeah. What happened? Did she make you sleep on the couch? Like, just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's them mainly mad about something going on with them. No, sure, yeah. Because I feel like with with art in general, even like if you watch a movie, I feel like we're trying to find ourselves in the art like when you watch a movie the reason why a movie hits you harder than usual it's like yep. you see yourself in that character in some way shape for sure so it's like with comedy they're trying to find your their opinions within your opinion and if they go against it then they kind of grab something from their childhood and mash it with yours and then when i have a argument with you afterwards or they're yeah. looking at you like mm. I think t for me, it's a lot of times it's literally just I'm so, I'm like a young punk to them, and why would I? Why should I be amplified, and them not? You know, like <laughs> yeah. So I, I feel like that's the and sometimes why but, should I be amplified? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. And, uh, but then uh, but other times like yeah, they're great and they're very open and stuff. I don't know. It, yeah. it just kind of depends. But I think there's a t there's a, there is a kind of archetype of like. I, I will say typically older white men uh -huh. there with their wives, yeah, kind of sour, yeah, sort of like no patience for for shenanigans. Yeah, because they because a lot of those dudes don't have boundaries anymore. Yeah, like they've like you create boundaries in order for you, yourself to better communicate with other people. Like, hey, mm. this is the line. You sure. cross it, it's going to be bad. But yeah. this is my line. But you have to tell people that. Yeah, but a lot of a lot of husbands just agree to stuff. <laughs> yeah. He like, want, like going to the comedy yeah, show that night. Yeah, he didn't want to come yeah. to the comedy show. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. That face, him looking at you or looking at me like that, yeah. is like, I didn't want to be here. Right, right, I right, wanted yeah. to watch the game. Yeah. And oh, it's just I like. I wanted to read a fucking biography, man. Yeah, now I'm yeah. sitting in the front listening <laughs> yeah. to this doofus. I know, I mean, yeah. who, who is this guy? I didn't, oh, God. Oh, his childhood. Oh, yeah, black police officers. Okay. <laughs> oh, whatever. Atlanta. They hate when I talk about that, too. When I talk about that, it makes no sense. They're like, what is happening? They look at you like, what's he mean? Is he? Uh, wait, dude. So you mentioned something about when you uh, a piece of art that you see yourself in. What's mm -hmm. a piece of art that when you were like in high school or younger that kind of moved you in that way and inspired you to maybe make art on your own? A piece of art that inspired me to make art on my own could be a movie, could be a st anything like uh, a movie. Um, first thing that comes to mind is <laughs> Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Okay, yeah, <laughs> sure, sure, classic. It's a classic. I yeah. always love it because he had so much freedom. And I was like, and I yeah, I realized later because he was white. Yeah. But, you know, I like a black kid can't just jump on a parade full of sure, yeah. so dark and shame to start singing. But, <laughs> but as a kid watching that, I was like, yo, he's just doing like to just do stuff. Yeah. He, he, he acted like he was sick. He took the whole day off. He's yeah. just he went and got his girlfriend from school. Right, right, right. And then he like he's like driving his friend's car, his friend's dad's car, and then that whole thing. It's like he had no. It's like he you had he had a warm side to him. Like, hey man, it's gonna be like just sure. relax. Like, accept what's happening. Like, look, we were just doing stuff. Yeah. So I just liked that freedom, and it's just like it. He made like the world his playground. That's cool. And I feel like in life, just like even now, like you got to step back and be like, okay, at the end of all this, we all die. Yeah. So it's like fucking have fun, bro. That's true. You know, have fun. Do the things. Be goofy sometimes. You know, we're so worried about what other people are thinking. That's why my 
Instagram, you see me doing music or I'm making beats or I'm yeah. doing, I'm just like doing the things that I'm, I have fun doing. Did you do music before you did comedy or kind of both at the same time, always like um, you were developing those skills? I did. I did. I was doing music like I was doing like beats in yeah. high school, but also I did comedy at a talent show in high school. So oh, it was, cool. So it kind of mashed up together. Yeah, nice. So how old are you? Thir- no, I said 30. I'm 40 now. Okay, nice. Yeah. So how are you? What, what uh, like literally what were you using to make beats in high school? Were there like like what programs were available? Uh, back then? There was Acid Pro. Okay. There was uh, Fruity Loops. Okay, uh, Fruity Loops I've heard of. Yeah. Fruity Loops, yeah, the early version. That joint yeah. was like like a stone tablet and a, <laughs> a spike. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Uh, and you just kind of taught yourself how to do it? Yeah, and yeah. there was a drum machine. It was an 808, and it was a 909 like yeah. drum machine pad thing. But I was morally, honestly, I was doing beats in the cafeteria. Wait, sorry, menu, one second. Scott, I'm hearing like a weird thing in my... It's a buzz that yeah. might get a cord. It's definitely not... Okay, okay, got it. All right, I just want to see, is there a way to avoid it, or? I don't know that I will. I might just uh, have the cord, like. Yeah, don't think it's, I don't think it's disconnected. I'll just try to avoid touching it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I've, uh, is it doing it? Yeah, I still hear it, like, in my right. That's okay. Whatever. We'll figure it out. I don't know where that's coming from. Could be in the JP. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Uh, I, I don't feel like it'll be a huge deal in the... Yeah. Oh, no, it's probably just a connection thing. Like, it's maybe you and your brother or something like that. Do you want to switch headphones? Uh, nah, it's okay. Yeah. You hear it in here? I hear it over here, too. I hear it, but I just thought it was just, like, just... A- ambient noise. Yeah. 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 Ambient noise. I feel like if if it, if it if you don't think it'll come up in the... It's fi- not going to come up. Okay, then, yeah, I don't, I don't really care. Really okay. Yeah. All right, sweet. Sorry about that. Um, no, it's all good. Uh, I was uh, making beats. Oh, oh that's cap- right. Yeah, yeah. I, I was make. I used to make beats in the cafeteria. Oh. So I used to make beats with pencils and all that stuff. Yeah. So people would come through rap. Yeah. Or whatever. So it was always making music and stuff like that. Like I would even get <laughs> pulled out of class by other students. Like, oh yeah, the principal wanted to see you. I'm like, really? He's like, no, nah, we need you to make beats in the cafeteria. <laughs> so, uh, so that, and um, did you ever have designs to be a musician? Where like that was your career? Uh, yeah, kind of, sort of, because I, I was in band. I played trumpet. Oh, cool. Played trumpet in band. Do you still do? Do you still play trumpet? No, nah, I, I gave it to my, my brother. He he took on it. He started playing, and, okay. he, and then he stopped. But, I mean, it, I would pick it up again. Yeah. I, I, I really did have fun doing it. I had some experiences <laughs> yeah. playing trumpet, some wild shit. Um, I remember one, there was one time I, <laughs> we were supposed to do a concert at some hall somewhere mm-hmm. and you load all your instruments onto the uh, bus and what happened was we got there and for some reason mine wasn't there yeah and i had a solo so and <laughs> so we're sitting there and this is where i guess this is where improv and just being yeah. goofy comes in i'm just like <laughs> 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 <So> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's good that sounds good. yeah so my yeah. <laughs> band instructor he's doing yeah. like this and he sees me do this he's like yeah. And my mom is in the audience. Like, <laughs> but I I stood up and I did it. And everyone was like. That's hilarious. Wait, so you ripped a trumpet solo just with. <laughs> yeah, I knew the song. It was yeah, like, yeah, right. I think it was like Jurassic Park. He was like. <laughs> like I was, but I knew the keys. So I was just like doing it. And I sat back down. The audience was just like. That's funny, man. Was this. Damn. This, <laughs> was this supposed to be? Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I played trumpet. And after high school, I did. I did get into music yeah. um, with a few people, like a friend of mine, my boy, uh, Fred, and a bunch of other folks. We did music. We got some stuff on the radio. Uh, we worked on, like, mixtapes, like Young Jeezy. It, like, it oh, that's be- cool. It became nice. a thing. Like, we started, and I was, I was working at, um, at Stankonia for a sec. That's, yeah. uh, that's Outkast. Right, yeah. Those guys. And um, so, yeah, I was doing music, but then, you know, you get into the industry and stuff is just, like, you see people trying to take... So it is like I got like I saw this one thing that really messed me up. It yeah. was a thing of I was working in the studio and they have they are labeled in letters. Like the A and the B rooms are like where the stars like Chris Brown will show up or whoever yeah. will show up in those and they have the the letters down which is like the lower on the totem pole. So I'm in the studio with this one cat, amazing writer, amazing singer. 
And I could just see this dude is working. He's writing. I'm making music for him. He's writing. He's working. Yeah. And I'm like, this cat, in my mind, is like, he's going to make it. This cat is amazing. But what, what they would do is they would bring in, like, the star players to the A and the B rooms, A, B, maybe the C rooms, and then they would come down the hall and, and listen to what was going on, and they would just buy it off you for cheap. They would, mm. buy, they would buy the song off you and then maybe take the beat, buy the beat off you, yeah, and then go into the A room, restructure it, rewire it for the artist. Let's say, let's say it's whoever, whoever, whoever big artist at the time, yeah, and then put it out. And you get nothing for it. You got that five hundred yeah, or right. thousand from yeah. the top, and you write, you sign on this contract. But obviously, no, yeah, no cut. Yeah, you're not getting yeah. notoriety. So I right. saw a lot of people that um, that went through that, and I was just like, oh, they just it's like a farm. Yeah. If you don't have a certain engine behind you, they're not. You're not going to be anything but just the background person, even yeah. if you want to be the main character. So, yeah, I started. I slid out of that, and then I ended up at an open mic at. I was at some bar and it was. It and this was, was in Atlanta. This was in Atlanta. Yeah. I ended up at is a place called Star Bar, and this guy named Rodney, he, um, I saw them doing comedy there. Yeah. And then, I asked him if I could jump up because at at that time this is when skits were cool on albums. Oh, you sure? Yeah. So I would do all the skits and do the voices. Yeah. Like, hey, nice. hey man, what you talking about? I got my album. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> hey man, I don't know what's going on. Like doing the voices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was doing stuff like that. Yeah. So I got I got paid doing skits. I mean skits for like albums, but you know, it was just fun to do. And I did a little bit of comedy at talent shows in high school, but right. I was just be mimicking Def Jam. Sure. Yeah. So when I saw that at this bar after I graduated, I was just like, oh, let me. See if I can do it. And then the guy put me on. You know, I came back whatever day you're supposed to come back, and I did it. And then from there, I was just like, nice, oh, this is fun. What was your material at the high school talent shows? Ooh, it was. Uh, <laughs> you weren't, I assume you weren't like dirty, right? You couldn't be. Oh, no. Yeah. I was like, yeah, and you stuck my dick. No, I wasn't doing crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I was. Because it actually sparked in an acting class because my acting teacher wanted me to play in the black history play, she wanted me to read a monologue. Yeah. And I was reading the monologue. I was like, I don't, I don't think this is funny. And she was like, it's, 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 it's funny. I was like, well, who wrote it? And I didn't know, like, it was like, you know, how teachers give you a copy of something, but it's always like diagonal. Yeah. They never really copy it straight. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Cause yeah, they, they can't get the book on the copy or the right. Yeah. Way. It's yeah. always like this weird <laughs> and it's like black as hell on the sides, like bordered. You're like, what? <laughs> So it's like stuff Half the is, words are cut off. Yeah, yeah, it was cut off. So I was like, I was like, are you sure this is funny? She's like, yeah, it's been proven to yeah. be funny. And then I found out later that it was a mono, it was something that Chris Rock had wrote. Oh wow. So I was just like, could I do something that I feel is funny? And she was yeah. like, well, yeah. And I watched Def Jam. Yeah. And it, I just took a lot of the stuff and made it like kid friendly. Oh, that's cool. So I did that for that. That's so funny. You did like kids bop Def Jam. Yeah, I did yeah. basically. <laughs> I think I did kiss about Def Jam. That's really funny, man. Who are the comics on Def Jam that you saw then and were like, "Oh, I'll, I'll try to do that." Bill Bellamy, definitely. Okay. Yeah. He had that. Uh, he had this joke about like the car alarm or something like that. It was Bill Bellamy, um, uh, Reggie McFadden. That's his name, Reggie McFadden. Okay. He had this joke about um, going to someone's houses, going to someone's apartment, and they got roaches. Uh huh. And then he said they act like. He said they act like nothing's wrong. <laughs> he said you, he's walking. Well, he said yeah. So what's going on? Said, How you doing? How's <laughs> yeah. your mom? How's everything? Oh really? No way. Yeah, cool. <laughs> and then he said you and I. Re- <laughs> I laughed so hard at that joke because I remember going to my like great great grandma's house in Florida and she had like roach. She had roaches like a yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. And he's like, you go in there like. What's going on in here? Yeah. Doesn't anybody see what's happening? Because <laughs> everybody's like, "Yeah, okay, all right, cool." <laughs> He's like, "What's?" <laughs> so, That's funny, man. So yeah, Reggie McFadden, yeah. Martin Lawrence is—he's uh, like the greatest host. He's, yeah. a, he's a great comic, but just man, just his charisma, sure, sure, on stage and just messing with people and just being that guy. Um, yeah, I and mean, Bernie Mac, Bernie, I watched a lot of Def Jam with my yeah. mom. Sir Bernie Mac, he stuck out. Chris Tucker, he had his set, but Bernie Mac and a lot of those other cats, they really like kind of sat with me because it was like that power. I don't know. Bernie Mac just had this control over the audience, man. Yeah, man. the cockiness. The yeah, it was just it was a thing of I came too far to let you guys mess up my vibe. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm you gonna laugh at these jokes. Like yeah. it was just like 
that whole you don't understand the music playing. Yeah. I don't know if you if you seen that. The do you mean like the the iconic the like, iconic yeah, where yeah, he yeah, had his sure, face sure. on his pants? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Have, have you seen that one? Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. Like he comes up, but then you you find out the history of it. You're like, oh, they there's a comic that went on before him that bombed right. hard. Yeah. And then Martin couldn't bring him back. Oh, so, damn. Which was crazy because yeah. Def, Def Jam sure. is his playground. Sure, sure, sure. So Martin couldn't bring him back. And then it was like, we got to bring Bernie Mac up. And then Bernie Mac came through with that energy. Like, he said, I ain't scared of you. Like, yeah, I'm not scared of you, mother. Yeah. It's like, and the way he just commanded it. And he said, kick it. Boom, dum, yeah, dum, yeah. Dum, dum, dum. You don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't scared of you, motherfuckers. Like, the way yeah. he just grabbed that shit. So yeah, I, so you saw that when you were like in high school or something. And yeah, like, and Fuck I was yeah. and I was on stage like yeah, like, yeah. You don't understand. <laughs> That's funny, man. <laughs> you don't understand. I'm not scared of you people. Have you ever had an experience like that that were like with a really difficult audience and you turned them around? Yes, yes, I've had that a few times, and it's uh, it's scary at first because yeah. you're like I don't know where this is gonna go. Yeah, but and then you know I don't know. It's like. What did you? What do you feel like you did right in those moments? Did you do a lot of crowd work? Did you just kind of do your jokes in a commanding way? Like, what do you think pulled pulled crowd them back? Ah, uh, what pulled them back? It was more so. It was that it's that wrestler confidence mentality. Yeah. You walk up there like, look, I'm doing this. Yeah. Get on board with this train. Yeah, yeah. And that was the energy. Like there was one show I did at this spot. They were already kind of like, eh. Yeah. And the and the in the in the um the host was like shitting on them a little bit, mm-hmm. like. But they were kind of bringing them. It's a, it a weird turmoil in the room, and I just went in there with this energy, like this, that, this. Nice. Yeah. And then the, they kind of just were here, and it was like a a volleyball effect. Like once you get them here, you got to keep them going. Right. So it's just like, I, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like kind like, of exhausting to. Yeah. yeah. It's like mentally, I was just. Because I like to do jokes where I can kind of kick it and sit in them and talk and then play around in between the space of the silence. Sure. But with with those audiences, I made it airtight. Yeah. So it was like one joke, and then I went right to the next one, right, right to the next one. As yeah. soon as I got them up, right to the next one. So it was just I kept them here, 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 here. And it, if it went down a little bit, I brought them back. Yeah. So it was just like a combination of all the tools we learn as a comic. You know, you learn – the crowd work you learn the improv you yeah. start grabbing stuff and being like yeah and the last time i was over here you start doing <laughs> yeah yeah like have you seen kareem green no kareem green dope stand-up comic yeah. he uses everything is like he, he in new york is he a new york comic? he's a new york okay, comic nice, yeah he was on um uh what's that the, the brooklyn joint and sh- on showtime with dan perlman kevin Iso. oh flatbush uh, he was in flatbush yeah. misdemeanor Got he it. was in that but he's he's funny he's like yeah. so and he's and I know he, I can tell he has jokes that he plays around with, but he just sometimes he'll grab something and start messing with yeah. it. Like he's just around. So you have to pay attention. Yeah, that's him. You have to just pay attention to him. That's cool. Yeah, Kareem is one of those guys. He, he does that really well as far as like orchestrating and bringing this energy and just constantly moving it. Yeah. So it's like, I think as a comic, you learn all these tools, even though maybe you bomb a show or if you, I don't know, it doesn't go as well. You learn these tools to kind of maneuver through crowds like that or crowds like the dude just being like, sure, yeah. who is this punk that's amplified? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's so, your uh, what's your most memorable bomb? Ooh. <laughs> it came right to the forefront. Uh, memorable bomb. As I did this show in Brooklyn and it was. What, uh, what venue? It was like one of those bar shows. Got it wasn't it. like yeah. it was like a club club. It was yeah. like it was a bar show venue, and black room. It's gonna say that straight out. Black, because <laughs> <laughs> the black room you can live and die. No, sure, yeah. And the bla- it's yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah. Like you can get them up top, lose them, get them again, lose them, and then they you lost the oh, whole wow. thing. Yeah, it's a weird energy. Whereas in like other spaces, you can kind of get them and kind of coast sure. a little bit. Yeah, but this joint. It was this guy who ran the show. It was like kind of like Martin Lawrence mm-hmm. in that energy where he, this is his territory. This yeah. is his playground. Like these guys. And I guess I came on a night where they were like, mm, yeah. <laughs> we're not messing with you. So he gets up on there. He does his thing. 
and I don't know, I don't know if it's just me, but black rooms sometimes do this thing where you like you ask them to line up, and you're like, oh, which one? Am I so, oh yeah, you're not going to first school, and they yeah. tell you you're going somewhere else. So you like, so you don't prepare. Mm, so I was sitting yeah. there like, all right, cool. He goes up. He's kind of bombing, but he's kind of getting them, mm. and he's kind of working it. And he just calls me up. Oh, I'm right, like, yeah. dude. Damn. So I'm already like, oh. Sh-. Yeah. So I get up there. I go in. I do my jokes. And the audience just like. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, oh, like, oh, I don't lost them. Damn. <laughs> so I and lost you, these people. I lost and, these folks. And your jokes are like, you know, you're doing like, you're doing act outs. You're doing like full body. Like you're yeah. really, you're like committed to your joke. So it's like. And that's the thing. Yeah. Well, with the, with the act out, it's very, very vulnerable. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm just like, and then he was like, have a <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, hey man, I'm really if I start going yeah. and nobody laughs, they just look at you like, damn, and you dude. feel stupid. Yeah. So I'm doing, <laughs> I went in, I was like, bang, and then it was nothing. It was like, all right, cool, all right. And they started mumbling and talking. So I'm trying to get certain, mm-hmm. some starting to get little people here, and I was like, someone. So I did the, I did the black thing. Hey, say, clap it up for the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my Sagittarius is uh, yeah. <laughs> Zodiacs. Get him back. So I'm doing it and it's just it's kind of but not. It's just this it's hot. It's like I've never felt silence that was so hot. Yeah. It was hot <laughs> silence. And then I knew it was done when I went. I had this idea. I said, Oh, this I know this joke is gonna get him. If I just gotta push it harder than usual. Yeah. So this lady, and I was thinking about how I was gonna incorporate it. It was a joke about like, I like women that know how to walk in high heels, but I can't stand women that can't, they don't know how to, they look like broken transformers. <laughs> <laughs> and I do like yeah. the transformer sound in the walk. <laughs> so that was the thing that was in my mind. I was like, oh, man, I yeah. should throw that joke in, maybe that's fun. And then this chick walked in with these heels on. And she couldn't really. And she was kind of wobbling a little bit. Yeah. And, I was, and, I, and I was like, yes. And I was like, uh-huh. there it is. And when I tell you, I did the biggest act out. Yeah. Like, gig- <laughs> like if you hooked your phone up to me, I could have generated yeah. so much energy. You'd have been at 90 in three Your seconds. power in the grid. I was just yeah. like, go with this act out. <laughs> and they did nothing. Oh, man. The security guard was there. He was like, yeah, that was funny, man. I liked it. I was like. That means something, though. It meant something. It means something, because that guy sees a lot of comedy. Yeah, because yeah. he, he's at the door. He's just like, hey, man, I thought that was funny, man. Yeah. That, was, that was crazy, man. <laughs> Yo, you did the Transformer shit, man. It was nice, man. The incorporation. I like it. And then the lady in the front, she was like, eh. And they gave me nothing. And that was the first and only time I've ever been like, all right, um, I'm done. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I said, where's the host? I'm done. Yeah. And he's like, hey, man, you sure? I'm like, yep. I'm done. Cool. Just come on up. And I gave him the mic and the damn DJ played uh, Yesterday by Boys to Men. <laughs> and that sh- <laughs> all you heard was, how do I <laughs> say goodbye? And I was I'm walking away. I'm just like, hmm. And then Black Rooms, they, they talk about you for at least five minutes because they like your pain. Oh, like, really? Hey man, you sure you want to come back up here? I'm like, no. Why would I? I'm in the back. I'm like, no. Why would I do that? <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I don't want you jumping on the four train. Oh, that's. <laughs> you know how it is. Just be jumping on the four train. I'm just like. That's I'm, that is kind of funny. I do. I, I have to give it up. That's kind of funny because it's like I. I mean, that sounds horrible. No, yeah, it was. But but also, now it I, is. Funny. I kind of prefer that to like nobody making eye contact with you. And just being oh. like, oh, you're, it's, it's like you like you have like fucking. Oh no, you get that like you too. You have leprosy. Oh, okay, you get you both. You get that too, yeah. but you, and, <laughs> yeah. well, you get like the old black dudes. Like, hey yeah. man, you get them next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey man, you did all right. <laughs> hey man, you was you was you was good. Yeah, yeah. You need to work on it a little bit, but they'll give you a critique. Right, sure. But the whole constructive criticism. Yeah, constructive yeah. criticism. Hey man, sometimes you no, know, they you just gotta they give you like a quote. Yeah. You get, you know I gotta know when to go. Yeah. Gotta well, flow. Once like, that I what? did. Once that I did. I thought I did. Well, and then this one dude was like, dude, you know, you just got to go there. You just got to not give a fuck. You know what I mean? Thanks, man. That was his criticism. <laughs> you got to just go up there and not give a fuck. I'm like, dude, what was I, what energy was I emitting that? <laughs> what, what did he see within me that <laughs> like, it just kind of like made me go crazy. I was like, what did he, it was, it felt so weird and subtle, you know? 
It wasn't like your jokes were. It was just like, dude, you gotta just go up there and not give a fuck. That's that's your problem. You dude. thought I cared too much? That was the I guess, issue. Yeah, I cared I, too I much. Guess, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. The audiences will tell you stuff that, like, I remember they'll tell you some things. You'd be like, what? Yeah. Like I did a show. I remember in Atlanta, I did this show, another black show, and I was going, and then I did the mistake of redoing a joke. Right? Like I did. I went up you, there. You like, forgot you did it? No. This is what happened. I yeah. went up there. First of all, it's another sports bar. TVs are on in the back. So you yeah. had to grab people's attention from that. And then you had an audience here, but you had people yeah. in the back. So I'm doing my stuff. And then somehow the the, the clip, this part, the XLR cable came out oh, the sure. mic. Yeah. So I'm doing the joke. I'm like, yeah. But... Yeah. I was like, oh, my bad. So I was in the middle of it. Yeah. And then I clicked it back in and then I redid it. Yeah. And then it was just like, it did not go over well. Sure. So I'm like trying to figure out how to get through this. And this one guy here, I remember he was like, hey man, talk about me. <laughs> talk about me. I was like, what? Yeah. Like I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't know about the thing of just shitting on people. That's what gets the laugh. Sure. Like, hey man, look at these new shoes, man. They look like wallets. Like, <laughs> I gotta use that. That's funny. <laughs> you know, oh fake love, yeah. motherfucker. Like yeah. I was. <laughs> so I didn't know that. But yeah. he's like, hey man, talk about me. I'm like, why? Come on, man, just say something about me. I'm like, no, <laughs> get away from me. <laughs> but he was trying to help. Like if I, he's like, look at my hat. Look at the hat. Yeah. I'm like. What are you talking about? Like, stop. Damn, that's like, he's like, phone, it's like phone a friend. And yeah, he was trying to, yeah, he was like, boom, oh, 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 oh. look at his face. They're like, oh, hilarious. <laughs> so, damn. Yeah, man. Dude, you ever have the XLR cable come out and then it takes you a second to be able to put it back in? And it's just, yeah, because you got to twist it. Yeah, the three and holes you, you fit. just can. You're like, what the, it's just the most brutal. It feels like psychologically deep in a way. They're like, oh, he can't, he can't put it in. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He doesn't know what he's doing. I just turned it into Broadway. Yeah. Like I've done that before, and it was. I was like, "Look, guys, this is what," and I just get louder. Oh, that's good, yeah. And then sometimes somebody will come up and then just pop it in, yeah. Or sometimes I'm just talking, doing the Broadway yeah. projecting thing, and then, oh, there we no, go. No, for sure. I, so, I th that's good to lean into it. That, sometimes I, this has happened to me recently, where it's like I'll suddenly have to fucking clear my throat in the middle of a joke, and uh, I can kind of feel it coming on, like. Yeah. It's like, oh, the phlegm's sort of, it's like creeping up. It's like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm going to have to. And yeah. then I, now I just like, <clears throat> I just do it like really exaggerated. Because mm -hmm. otherwise it's like, it sounds weird and bad. What's the regular version? Of <clears throat> well, I, what I mean is like, you just try to avoid it. Mm -hmm. And then you suddenly like can't talk anymore. That's happened to me before. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, or, or not like, <laughs> but I just mean where it like you, it like you struggle to like get words out. Yeah. And then you have to, so I just kind of like take a second do it in some crazy exaggerated way and then go back instead of like try oh, wow. to try to do it subtle because it's like that's wild that's the you know what i mean like <laughs> so you do like an exaggerated version in order to keep the momentum going just in, in order to in acknowledge that this is i sh i it sucks that i have to clear my throat yeah and so i'd rather just make a fucking thing of it like the be <laughs> it, more theatrical do you, ha do you have it? a joke that goes along with it or you just kind of just no yeah, and be... then what happened <laughs> Oh well, yeah, no. I mean, back. it's always. I, I. What I mean is, it's always awkward. So yeah. I'll just lean into it being awkward for a second <laughs> instead of try to like avoid it or yeah. be weird. Does that make sense? I guess not really. It does. It. it, it I, I get because yeah. I'm like I would just do it. I would just really? Like, oh, like, <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, and then move on. Yeah. But to, to dramatize it, just I feel like it brings more attention to it. Like, so you think you could just clear like, your throat and it wouldn't be that? people would just be like, oh yeah, you know, that's, yeah, that's it's normal. Just, yeah. Being human. Right? Yeah. Like, Maybe you're right. You must have a, a very different way of doing it. Like it just your regular way is just like crazy. I just mean the few times where it happens. What what happened when you when you did it regular? What happened that you were like? I tried to avoid clearing my throat. I tried like maybe I'll just pass, mm -hmm. and then I just like literally couldn't really get the punchline out. <laughs> so oh. then, so then because, it just sounded, is it because your mind was no so no because it was like because my my voice was fucked up so it's like and then and then I had to like all right and then go back to it. Or if something like that were to happen, like I've had, like my throat was dry or something yeah. like that, I would just talk about it. I'd be like, da -da -da, like ah, god damn, my throat is dry. Like I'll just say it. I think that's like, a I, version of that's that's what a version of what I'm talking about. It's just like bringing, like uh, acknowledging it in a way that uh -huh. where you don't try to just like ignore that it's happening. Okay, but you do it via sound. I think so. Where yeah. I just would 
be a like a Morgan Freeman for myself and just dialogue it. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you do like a little. Like, yeah, I yeah. am thirsty. Hey, can I get some of that? Yeah, that's good. That's nice. It's just, it's just like bring people into the performance in a way. I, mean, I think that's my because uh, you know I, I don't try to be cool on stage like I don't think that I don't think I pull that off you know mm -hmm. so I think if if something uncomfortable is about to happen I'd rather just like lean into it and then have to dig out of the hole because then I get a sort of energy from doing that from digging out of a hole yeah you, you like the challenge I kind of do yeah <laughs> the challenge so have you done like sometimes for example I'll go on stage and I'll be like hi and they'll be like Hi. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> well, not just there. They're like, it's a kind of a weird way to start. So yeah. they're like, hi. And then that, that initial weirdness. Yeah. Kind of makes me feel good. I mean, because I mean, then I'm a, like, all right. Like, and I don't mean, I don't try to be weird on purpose, but I just mean, I'm like, instead of being like, you know, the weird, awkward buttons. I think so. Yeah. I feel like, and I, I have social anxiety and I often have difficulty, relate, you know, like it's not like difficulty relating to people, but like. So I've often been at a party and not really known like how to stand or what to do with myself. And so I think that's a feeling I get used to. Mm -hmm. So if it happens with an audience, it's almost like that's more comfortable. And, oh, then, I, and then I can get into my material and be So fine. just lean into the awkwardness. I think so, yeah. Yeah, parties can be awkward sometimes, especially if you go by yourself. You yeah. really know many I people. Yeah, I mean, ideally that, you don't, that doesn't happen very much, going by yourself to a party. I've done that a few really? times. Yeah, just, just walk up in there. It's just happening. It's just start, but I'll just act as if I knew That's everybody. Good. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, man, remember? He's like, what? Yeah. And people don't want to be awkward and sure. not be like, oh, I don't remember the black guy. I was like, your name is Jeff. Nice. Yeah. nice. How was how the family? Everybody has a family. Yeah. <laughs> you That's just, good. Yeah. You just start chit chatting it up and then you just, you're jamming with his mom. Like, hey, what's up? <laughs> That's what I do too. Is I, I just try to lock it. whatever conversation I end up having first at a party. Mm. I'm just like I'm gonna commit to this really hard instead of like yeah. like looking around like oh maybe there's someone cooler to talk to. I'm like no, nah, I'm just gonna. Uh, yeah, I hate. No, it's a it's a horrible it's horrible when it happens to you and it, yeah. it kind of feels horrible to do. Yeah. I, so I just try to like all right, I'm talking to this person right now. Let me like lock really, in. Yeah, let me lock in, and then that will lead to another interaction, and I'll yeah. just be more like comfortable. Yeah, I mean, I think that's how we all should be conversating. But a lot of, I, I guess, it also depends on the party because I've been to like, I guess, industry parties. Oh, no, sure. Yeah. And then people are always they're looking at you, talking to you. Then they, and then yeah, they move horrible. on to the next person. And you're just like, all right. So rather than being like taking a person, just go, just yeah. go over there. Yeah, yeah. I really, I've, I've I said that to people, like, hey, just go over there. Yeah. What yeah, do you yeah. mean? Do you want to talk to that person? Go. What are you doing? When did you find your voice on stage? When do you feel like you figured out like what you were doing in stand up? Uh, figure out. I feel like I'm always still figuring out and rerouting things. That's true. Um, I mean, same. Yeah, but I, I think that I guess the base level foundation of it. Um, I don't know. I'll, I think when I stopped thinking so much about the material, and oh. I just had the because I feel like it was it was robotic. I feel like in some ways I was robotic because I was thinking about the material. Like I wrote it in spaces. So I had to make sure I, cause I always had to sing if I didn't want to forget it. So yeah. I always got to, got to read all the lines. Yeah. I got to yeah. have all, I got to connect everything. And once I just kind of was just like, I think I got this and I just kind of released it. I think the on stage persona and the, everyday persona just kind of started to blend oh that's cool because i think that's what we want to do in a way i mean just maybe in a slightly exaggerated version of ourselves just to kind of sell certain things sometimes yeah. but but yeah you want to be yourself for sure you want to yeah. be yourself because yeah. it's like it's very it's authentic and people can tell if a person's being faked so it's like i felt like once i just kind of was like all right i'm just going to go with it if i forget something i'll just add in what i think is there and I think that's where a lot of new jokes came from for yeah. me because it was like oh I didn't think it would go that route yeah right and when I was so stuck in a structure of these lines these are the lines that I wrote I got to go with this that's when it kind of got stiff and it was just like people felt a disconnect I feel so when I was like all right da -da 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 -da. oh shoot I forgot mm, all right what about this what if I went there and there and then that just brought on <clears throat> this natural thing of um, the voice I guess and That's then, cool. You know, and it's still still changing, still ever changing and moving and 
experiment with different types of comedy, different ways to get into a joke, different ways to hit a punchline. What's the most recent thing you like learned? Like the recent, most recent like trick you learned to do in stand up? Voice control. Voice control. Vo- oh. Voice con- vo- like um, volume or. Uh, I'll say voice and body movement. Yeah. Like cause I'm used to standing up and pacing, kind of looking at people and this and that. But then I, I started playing around with the idea of what if I got up there and just sat down? I just sat down oh. and I make myself as small as possible. So if yeah. I'm up there and I'm on the stool and I'm just like, like this, so yeah. I'm kind of leaning forward with the mic and I'm kind of talking to people like this, like, look, this is what's going to happen. Here. Yeah. So, and then, and then slowly bring it up. Sure. And let's see what happens with, if I, if I start talking here and then people, and you see the audience go like this and they kind of lean in a little yeah, bit. Yeah. It makes it more intimate. So then when you start to, hit him with something it's like oh snap that's cool so it's like playing around with different volumes and and expansions of the body yeah like if i'm a little small or if i'm gonna go big if i'm gonna start out big and i will come down small let's see or I'm, or if i'm like on the stage and i sit down on the stage they're like what, the fuck is, what is happening what? yeah so it's just like these different conventional and i mean it's like different ways of just playing around with the joke or doing certain jokes that i have fun with like what would happen if i did it this way rather than this way yeah so so yeah yeah how, and how did you figure that out just by doing it or was there someone you watched and you were like oh i like that let me try that um i was playing around with the idea at first already like i was like oh what if i sat down because i'm like moving a lot i was like, looking at some tape and then i was looking at greer barnes yeah yeah he's good greer barnes is a master yeah he's he's like He's he's so far beyond, and he doesn't get as much props as he deserves. Yeah, that guy is amazing, and I just watch him like he's like a he's an artist up there. And he, I remember him. I was talking to him one time, and he was like, he didn't want to. We were just talking about comedy and just something. He said that he didn't want to be the um, the loud comic, the loud black guy. Yeah, and he grew up. In comedy, he grew up in a time where every black comic was yeah, at, at this sure. volume all the time, and this this and this. so he was like he wanted to change it and do it differently. And so when he comes to the mic and he does one of my favorite intros that he does is <laughs> he just he looks so he comes up looking disheveled, yeah, like disheveled in a way of like he doesn't he's like he wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah, he'll go up there he'd be like, "Say hey, what's going on, y'all? I just <laughs> I." Uh, I'm not a comic. I was just at the bar, <laughs> and it was like, "You wanna, yeah, you wanna get five dollars?" And I was like, "I ain't got to take my pants off or nothing." Right? <laughs> he said, "Yeah, I'll do it." <laughs> but he just has this, this. That's funny, man. This quiet. Yeah, I love that thing. And then he just and he. Has I also love like voices Im- too. I love like immediately discrediting yourself. You yeah, know, like, I'm not a comic. Like I just love that idea of like, like. Like somehow, I mean, obviously, none of the, nobody in the audience is like, I, "Oh, I guess he's not a comedian." But yeah, like, yeah, there's something funny about instead of going up there and like demanding attention mm-hmm. and being like, "I'm supposed to be here," I'm confident doing yeah. the opposite, and then kind of yeah. like going back. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, and he just has these these silent killer jokes, man. It just it hits you, and you'd be like, "Jesus." Yeah, like he has jokes that I look at, and I'm like, "Dude." He's one of those guys that you see, and you're like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. God damn it. That is so great. Like the the ping pong joke, like a ping pong table in the hood. <laughs> I don't know that joke. What is it? <laughs> and, then the, and then the police show up. Yeah. The way he does that joke, uh, Obama stopping the oil spill. Did you see I that? I don't know that joke. Oh, man. He does this act out, which is so dope. Like He's just like, they basically like. I'm just summarizing. He said basically they were like they were expecting Obama Obama to go out there and and solve the oil spill. Like uh. he's gonna jump in the ocean. And then he just does this long act out of like he's in the water, he's swimming. Obama sees it, he's like and then, and then he does this thing where he rubs his I couldn't figure out for the life yeah. of me how he was doing it, but he rubs his thumb on the mic. So when he does the, he's not saying anything, he just yeah. goes you just hear do, 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 do. I'm like, what the oh, fuck is that cool. coming from? Yeah. But he's just like, he's doing this That's and he's cool, rubbing man. the mic and he's like, he swims up <laughs> there. Ah, 
Michelle, I did it. Like he just comes <laughs> back and it's just like between that joke and the joint he did on Don't Tell, he has a Don't Tell that's yeah. out. Check that, check that out. Greer Barnes, Don't Tell. About bees. <laughs> and he was talking about how they were trying to make the Africanized bees look more dangerous than the European bees. <laughs> And then he was like, how are they going to add racism into the bug kingdom like that? He's like, like the European, he's like, what are we going to do today? Huh? I guess we'll pollinate these flowers. And he's just like, they're just smoking cigarettes. And he's like the, the Africanized bees. And he's just like, what are we going to do today? I'm going to sting somebody. Like he just had this aggressive bee. But he just has these jokes that you're like, they're so fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, for sure. I feel like a lot of jokes these days are more like um, and then depressed and the therapy. No, sure. Yeah. And it's just like this, this, these heavy, I feel like you need, you should have some of those heavy things in there just to show parts of you to show that dynamic of you. Yeah. You as a full human being, you as a few full human being living in this world, but also you got to have like those, I mean, we're, we were observational. We see everything. So it's like, I feel like he has a lot of that in his, uh, in his stand up. And it's so good, and it's the way he delivers it is amazing. That's awesome, man. Can we? Do, uh, I want to try something. Here, What's up? Which is okay. So you make beats, and uh, I was thinking, I want to hear your opinion on the different classic iPhone ringtones to see if they would make good beats. Would they make good beats? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go Wait, for do it. Do you want to do that with me? Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. All right. Let's start with let's start with a classic alarm. Is it the da 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 da? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What kind of song do you can you imagine with uh, that kind of uh, with that kind of beat? That could be a dope DMX song. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like mm, mm, and slow it down. Mm, 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 like space it out. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. They put. <laughs> that'd be that'd be dope. Dude, there's another one that could be a good DMX. I mean, this is pretty hacky, almost honestly, but. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah that you feels... could put you could put that. Yeah, I would put that that bark right behind the kick, but faintly. So it'd be like boom, boom, and then put. Oh yeah, that's put, nice. Put put it behind the kick, and then also put. Now I'm thinking about it. You know those uh those marching band those when they all come together like shoom. Yeah, to, yeah. To shoom. I would put that behind it with the dog, right on top of the like an 808. Nice. So have this. Giant, By the way, what, I, this drum. is a really stupid question. So, what is an 808? I, I've heard that a million times, but I actually don't know. Like, it's what, like a really deep drum. It's like boom. Oh, uh, okay, boom, got it. Boom. You know, you know that song by Yin Yang Twin? Boom, boom. Yeah, boom, yeah, boom, for sure. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Th those are different 808s oh. that they've changed the pitch for. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's a very deep like kick. Yeah, the whisper song, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, such a great song. <laughs> such a fucking funny song. Hello, mama. You tell yeah. Me. Uh, I remember when that first came <laughs> yeah. out. I was in the car like. What's going on with this song? Yeah. <laughs> we, we, uh, so wait till you see my dick. <laughs> wait, go beat that. That's a, good, uh, that's a good example of like voice control and voice modulation. Dude, that, I yeah. was just like, I remember listening to that being yeah. like, this is genius. Yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> and then hearing it in the club, I was like, everybody's yeah. like, everybody was whispering. Yeah. <laughs> everybody. That's, we, a, that's a we crazy. We all dancing like, wait till you yeah. see my dick. <laughs> <laughs> we were just like whispering and they had episodes. they had people in the club whispering which is that's crazy awesome. wow that's fucking it yeah. was so great what an achievement okay let's let's do a, oh this is kind of a classic one what's up oh yeah you could I, I could see I could see Dilla or um, The Alchemist doing something like if you slow it down I can see slowing it down a little bit yeah. and then making one of those like boom bap type beats with that one. But, and sorry, can you explain boom bap? Boom it? bap is like a, it's like a, I, I feel it's a, it's like a drunken drum. Like it's like, it okay, doesn't, yeah. like, I feel like standard drum is a boom, ba, ba, boom, boom, ba, but uh -huh. when you kind of twist it and like stretch it out a little bit, like Dilla was a pro at doing that. Yeah. He's like, boom, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, 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 ba, boom, boom, boom. Oh, so it's a little bit it's, off it's, kilter. It's, it's delayed and kind of off kilter. Oh, so that's it cool. has that that bop to it. The boom, boom, yeah. Boom. And then certain drums, like a pocket drum, like those little small drum kits, yeah. like with just a kick snare, you can kind of play around with that. But I could see like a boom bap type beat. Do you play way. physical drums? Like, do you know how to play on a drum set? I, by ear. 
like I've, I I could I could read the notes kind of sort of but yeah. I had a few drum lessons but the last one didn't really go too well. Yeah. He was like a he was a cokehead. Oh damn. Yeah, he, he was great. He was amazing at the drum, but he just he would just leave me for long periods of time. And I So almost, you took multiple <laughs> lessons with him and then he just kind of bailed on you? Yeah, the first time I was like messing around with it and he yeah. was really he was there and I think he was like revving up to Yeah. And I just saw different versions of him. Sure. And so the last time I think the last time, yeah, the last time he left me in the studio space and for so long that this actual band showed up. Oh, shit. And I, and I was just messing around. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And I guess they thought I was the drummer for the session <laughs> and they were just playing yeah. with me. And I was just like, then I was stressed. I was like, these yeah, are yeah, actual. Yeah. It was yeah, a bass guy. He's like, he's like, yeah, hit, hit, keep playing. I'm like, oh shit, keep it funny. going, keep it going. And then the guy was killing on the guitar, and I just, I found a rhythm because I was like, I don't want to let these guys down. <laughs> and I, just, yeah. and then the guy came in. He was like, oh what the hell? Oh man, he's he's still learning. They were like, really? And he's like, good job. Damn, this is like your fucking fake, your like uh, mouth trumpet story. Yeah, I was just yeah. faking it. I was like, I don't want, <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to let him down. It was yeah. so good. I was just like, oh shit, just keep the fucking beat. I would, man. I, I like tried to teach myself drums uh, over the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have a drum set or anything. I would just like go to a little studio space. But yeah, it is really fun. But mm -hmm. yeah, just my fucking left hand sucks, so I couldn't get the like that like kind of dexterity with my left hand. You know, I, I, it just felt like I was. It felt like it was like numb or something compared to my right hand. Yeah, that that was one thing I, I was I was working with, just trying to figure out how to balance that out. Because one, it, each hand has to work independently. Right. It will each each ligament. You have right. Your legs. Right. Right. Over here, this one's this one is keeping the count. This one's hitting the the bass drum. Yeah. So it's like a lot of a lot of movement. So. I play around with the. I have a drum machine now that I play around with and I have fun with because I can put headphones in. I don't have to worry about nice, it being yeah. too loud. So I got like an MPC that I mess around with. Oh, cool. Put, you yeah. assign drums to the pads and sounds and you can play around with that. Oh, nice. And it's still percussive because you have to hit it. Yeah, like, you have to yeah, hit yeah, it, but right. you also have to still have that independence. Right. Because that's it's cool. like, so it's doom, 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 You have to play around with. Oh, that's cool. So it, I still get my drum fix in. Yeah, that's nice. With that. Do you play piano or any like? Do you play any like uh, uh, analog instruments? Uh, piano, a lot of stuff by ear. I like I had maybe one or two lessons, but it just I don't know. I guess I, I guess I, trumpet is the is trumpet the, yeah. was the main one yeah, yeah, because yeah. I was in class. I was constantly right. going over scales and notes and uh, learning music, whole notes, forte, mezzo forte, like learning all of the yeah. theory of it. So um, yeah, I would say trumpet is the one I'm morally trained and everything else was more so by ear like if i had to be on a drum set and i was trying to find a certain loop <clears throat> i could find it yeah it's like a goon. <laughs> like oh shit let me record that yeah and then you kind of can find it so or if i'm playing the bass i'm trying to figure out my finger that <laughs> so it sounds like you have enough like basic musical ability that you can kind of fuck around on any instrument even yeah. if you're not like if super I, proficient if you could find I, it's like with anything if you could find the mechanics of it like how yeah. it works you could like oh this is how yeah just like with different languages like i've been messing around with different languages and different like uh different accents and it's just like some accents are back in the back of your throat yeah semi raw head right in the middle you know, it's all yeah. like this. Uh -huh. And it's something like American is more always at the front. I didn't think of that. You know, if you do true, like yeah. Korean, it's a hadam samida. It's all no, It's like back here. Do you, do you actually speak Korean? A little, little bit. A yeah. little bit. I, I messed around with that for a yeah. little bit. But just like messing around with those, you can see, you can hear it back yeah. here. Oh, that's cool. Because you can't say, shili uh, hemida. I think that means like please or something like that. Uh -huh. You gotta say shili hemida. You gotta be right here. You gotta shili hemida. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm it's actually a really down. good piece of advice for like trying to do accents. It's like figure out where it is. Yeah, where it is, and yeah. then you can kind of play around with it. Like cook, nigga. Like from here, what's the what's the plan? What we're doing here? Yeah, it's what back here. It's not, it's not here. Yeah, it's what it's all the way back in the back oh, row. Here. So smart. It's like playing around with it. So it's like with, uh, with instruments when you figure out like with the bass or something like that, you figure out like oh, how, how am I supposed to hold? Oh, I can do it like this. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Once you get like the mechanics of it, I feel like you just figure anything out. Who's your favorite trumpet player? 
Ooh, trumpet player. I mean, I listen to so much Miles, man. Yeah, he is really fucking good. It's Miles like, is this. He just, the he, sound that he gets with his trumpet is crazy. He has so many different versions of himself that yeah. I and Miles and uh, I like Dizzy, Dizzy Gillespie. Okay, yeah. That he like. I'm not. I, I don't. Li- I haven't listened to as much Dizzy Gillespie. Miles, I've listened to Miles Davis. I feel like weird calling him <laughs> Miles. Like, yeah, I don't Miles know Davis. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. my friend Miles. Yeah, yeah. No. But, um, um, what's your favorite album by Miles Davis? Kind of Blue. Oh, nice. Yeah. Because it has uh, flamenco sketches on it. I love that song. Yeah. It has a lot of just like chill joints. It's really. And I feel like that's a was really nice, relaxing album. His earlier work. I feel like yeah. that was his. And um, do you and, like Bitches Brew? Like that era of him. I kind of I, I, I kind of faded into that. Yeah. But I just go right back to that kind sure. of blue album. That, yeah. I love that album. That album and um I like I like I like some Dizzy Gillespie stuff cuz he was very he kind of changed the instrument in his own. Is he the one that like way. popped his cheeks out? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah him and to be more recent uh Wynton Marsalo. Marsalis I think his name is. Yeah, yeah. He's a trumpet player. I like some of his stuff, but nice. but Miles is my guy though. Yeah. He's yeah, just so I, cool. Like you see him in interviews, he's like, "Yeah, man, you know, what you gotta do is." Like, and the way right. there's a story about how he, <laughs> what he's saying, he's cool as shit. There's a story about that he like how he fucked up his voice, his drugs and shit, right? I think it's it, it, like yeah, and then he, I don't remember what it was, but they were like, "You like can't, you like can't talk for like two weeks," and he he refused, and then he forever fucked up his voice. Yeah, he yeah. kept. I know. He, I I feel like he was smoking a lot. He smoked yeah. a lot. I don't know. Miles is a wild. It seemed like he was a wild guy. I don't know all of his his history, but I feel like he was he was fucking a lot of bitches, doing a lot of drugs, doing yeah, a lot. Yeah, no, of, for sure. Ja- jazz musicians in that era, it's like they had pretty crazy lifestyles. I feel like now jazz musicians generally, it's like fairly, yeah, it's chill. fairly clean. You know, it's like uh, even if you're playing like super late shows and stuff, mm-hmm. it's like uh, you, you probably just don't make enough money to <laughs> do a bunch of drugs. No, I think back then it was yeah. just like it was a lot of. Who was it? Oh no, no, no. Quincy wasn't really jazz. He was more of a composer. But um, Quincy, I remember reading parts of his book, and he was talking about how it was just like it was so much racism. Them trying to get to a gig was hard. They had to have the the green book. You yeah, know about that. Right, 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 right. To get to certain spaces and just trying to get to a gig was just like a bitch. So they yeah. they would make sure they got paid a lot. Right, right. Because it was like a racism cost. They, sure, sure, they sure. They were trying to get <clears throat> so. That's part of the overhead. Yeah, they was like, we got. Yeah. If we're gonna get beat with all the cops, it's gonna be a dollar per slide. Right. Damn. <laughs> so they're like, you gotta get our money's worth. So I think that's why they got more money out of the game, because they were like, this is a risk. This yeah. is danger. Right. Whereas now it's just like you are just playing in Bushwick for Did, like. Have you been to a jazz show recently? Uh yeah, I went to the Blue Note. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was a it was a dope band. I can't, I can't think of the name of it, but they were like from New Orleans, and man, they were killing that shit. Like they were, they had a trumpet player. He yeah. was in it. And he was like, I don't know. I don't think I feel like he was just fitting himself within the the groove. Like they yeah. had like a groove going, and he just showed up. And he just, he was standing in the middle of the stage, not do anything for a while. They they just grooving the drummer. Yeah. Everybody's going. He was like. He just start going. Yeah. We were like, oh, 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 oh shit! Like he yeah. was just like killing that. It was like this, this scat like energies. Like I don't, I don't have the the notes exactly, but I know where I want to put stuff. Right, and I know how to jump out. He would be in, and he would be out. That is a very cool thing to watch. I, I, I've noticed that too. Why, like, yeah, I feel like every. I guess except for like the bassist and the drummer mm-hmm. who have to keep it going the whole time. It's like yeah. it is cool to watch them like jump in and out. Of uh of the song as they're doing it, yeah, man. Um, okay, let me play you another ringtone. Go ahead. Mm. Definitely, Pharrell, Neptune's. Ah. <laughs> I could even see Timbaland messing with that. Yeah. Okay. I could see Pharrell doing something with that, and it being on like a Missy Elliott new album. No, oh, nice. Because Missy Elliott, she would. She's one of the best. She really is. She yeah. does. She does it. Missy Elliott does not get the props she deserves. Yeah. She is. She every album was a different thing. Yeah. Like she would, and then with some albums, it was so different that she would change the gambit of the music industry. 
I mean, I I'd never listened to her albums, but even the huge single that everybody mm-hmm. knows, mm-hmm. that's the, one of the weirdest popular songs Which I've one? ever heard. Uh, flip it and reverse it, like oh that one, yeah, 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 yeah like that's, yeah. it's like freaky as hell, and it's, it but get your freak on that. Oh, well, I'm sure, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. what is that sound? Yeah. Like, that is very and cool. She had like a random little, oh, my magic girl. She just yeah. has stuff in her I songs. Know. Yeah. Like she's just, and uh, what's that? She's a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, boom, 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 boh, boom, yeah, boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. It's like she just has these, and she has a whole different look. Yeah. Missy is just. I loved her, dude. Yeah. If I, I could I, give her awards, I would like give her everything because she just keeps changing stuff. Has, has she made music recently? She's, from what I've seen, she's done like features. Okay on stuff and she's written things for people she recently had a concert that i missed she was at the barclay oh cool she had like a tour oh nice yeah she busta rhyme she had sierra on it nice. she had like yeah. and it was like a dope from what i saw it looked really dope yeah like i wish i could have been there but she is here and there with it yeah i mean but it's like the last the last big thing she did was um did she work with like one super bowl per- oh, that, oh with, really katie perry katie perry oh. It was funny. Katy Perry brought her on oh, weird. with her. Yeah. And then everyone thought Missy was a new artist. Oh. <laughs> they were like, oh my God, it's so good that Katy oh, Perry so funny, is man. letting new artists. Yeah. They were like, what? This is Missy. What the f-? Yeah. What were you going to say? Did she work with primarily like one producer or did she work with a bunch of different producers with, with her? Like, I feel like she worked mostly with Timberland. Yeah. Timberland. Uh, she worked with the Neptunes a lot. What do like Timberland? And, and then she started like branching off because Timberland was definitely her first two albums i think and then she started messing with like other other producers but mainly timberland was her guy though yeah nice because there was i mean timberland and the neptunes they were like they were all virginia folks oh i didn't know so they were all coming from virginia so it was like they would just kind of trade off like maybe if missy didn't rap on a song she would maybe write one for sure pharrell and them so so yeah here let's do uh we'll do two more Mm -hmm. and then we're gonna talk about uh painting and then we're gonna talk about a poem okay uh all right let's do harp yeah what do you think uh, that that's some uh that could go you could definitely do some r&b something with that yeah or that feels more r&b yeah i could hear like joe <laughs> coming back yeah or, who is it uh who's, who else i could hear like tony braxton doing something with that yeah. or it has a I mean, you can also speed it up, and I could hear T Pain doing something with that. Oh wow! And then kind of chop it at the end, so yeah. it kind of jerks back. So oh yeah, that's and then cool. turn it into like a club thing. Yeah, well, it just depends on I guess the way it hits you when you're when you're sampling it. Okay, and then last one. Party rock. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like the key change, or not the key change, but like the change in melody. I could hear. Yeah. I could definitely. Well, if those guys are still around, I could hear them doing something with that. Yeah. Um. I don't. For some reason, Pitbull and Lil John came to mind. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Mister Yo Fat. It's like I could hear. <laughs> yeah. I could hear him doing something like that. A lot of hand clap. Yeah. Like a club. Like I could be a club banger. It could be. It just it just depends on how you how you flip it. How often do you make beats? Um, I just, it's just when a, you feel like it. When I feel like it, but sometimes like, then it just depends on what I'm working on at the time. Like if yep. I'm working on a thing that I want to add some music to, I'll be messing with it. Or sometimes I'll just have something in my head. I'm like, oh, how do I even put this down? Yeah, that's cool. So like I have like a whole completed structure in my mind. I'm like, damn it. You gotta just get it out some way. Yeah, you just start messing with yeah. just playing around with sounds. But um every now and then. That's cool. That's I good. mean also what's cool about it is that it, it integrates with your comedy where it's like, all right, I'm working on something, it could use music, mm-hmm. I'll do music for that. Yeah. So it's all a part of it. It's not like, oh, I'm working on comedy too much, so I don't have time to work on music or something like that. Yeah, I kinda play around with things. Yeah. Yeah, and then also with content. I mean, you've seen the stuff. Yeah, that's true. On, that's on, true. On yeah. my Instagram, it's like, oh, this would be good if I'm doing comedy. Like sometimes I'll have my comedy, and I'll do some music to go behind it. Yeah, so yeah. I'll do like a soundtrack with it. Yeah, you're creative with your stand-up reels. It's not just like you on stage. You'll you'll do like vo- video effects. Yeah, you do shit with the subtitles. It's like it's not just like here's yeah, me doing a show. Yeah, because people they're 
they got the attention span of a squirrel. Absolutely. Yeah. Or a hummingbird. It's yeah, just yeah. Like, just like, so you got to keep them going. Yeah. So it's like every other frame is like another thing. Like, did I zoom in? Now it's black and white. Now yeah. it's this. Now it's fragmented. Now it's this. But you do it like more artistically because I think other people just do it kind of obnoxiously. It's like that like YouTube style of like quick cuts, like zoom ins, very wacky, very like children's entertainment. <laughs> very children's you're, entertainment. <laughs> yours is a little more like tasteful, I think. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, can we look at the painting? Go for it. What's up? What's up with the painting? All right. So this is, uh, <laughs> oh. this is Kali by uh, Raja Ravi Varma. Um, he says a god or some sort. Yeah, it's a Hindu goddess. So to some, to anyone who's like listening and not watching this, can you describe what's going on in this painting? Ah oh, man, it's a it's an avatar with. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it does look like an avatar. That's funny. Yeah, with four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an angry who, ass Navi. Yeah, if you've seen Avatar, this yeah. is an angry one. Yeah, <laughs> it's like an avatar mixed with Goro from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> That's very angry for some reason. It has a head in one hand, a sword in the other hand, a red hand. I guess the head I think is it's blood in a probably. plate. It's killed two people. It's not racist, so it killed a black, a white person, and it looks like an Indian person. Yeah. <laughs> Equal opportunity. Equal. Like, yeah. I, it's, it looks like everybody can get it. Yeah, like it's yeah. just <laughs> it's the energy. Uh, I like that yellow behind the i head. like that too because yeah. it, it's, it's like signifies like this intense rage or just like this exclamation of just like i'm yeah you, anybody can get it and she's wearing a she has a necklace of heads oh yeah the necklace of heads and then she has a like a belt of arms this is a woman yeah this is kali the hindu goddess of like destruction i think okay yeah, i see the hair i was, I was like okay yeah it's yeah like chest like a man like, I know, yeah. It's kind of like, are like, they boobs or are they pecs? It's kind of like, yeah, it's like to, Conan yeah. the Barbarian. Like, yeah, for sure. She definitely has a lot of crunches. It's fun because you said like she looks angry, but I think she's having a great time. Probably is. <laughs> she's she's having, probably she, been through a few divorces. Like, <laughs> a few she's divorces, like, 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 eh, like, fuck these men. Yeah. Like, ah, bitch. Uh, yeah. All I know about this is that Kali is known to be the like goddess of destruction, and this is like a oh, that makes sense. Unbelievably intense depiction of her. Do you like this painting? I do. I do like this. What do you like about it? I like the colors of it. I like Me the, too. I like the fact that even though she's blue, the blue that's behind her is just enough to make her body pop. Yeah, that's true. It's like you say, it's a good hue of blue. Yeah. I like the jewelry and the gold on her ankles, on her wrists, and even at the top of her arm, of her arms, and the, the crown, like all the jewelry, yeah. everything, every color sets in a right space to where it pops. Even like the slight red in her uh, dress, feather dress thing, it's like a little bit of red that's kind of faded and like brown or beige behind it. Right, right, right. And then that yellow spark in the back. It's like all the colors, they sit right. It's very like warm. The colors are warm and like it's kind of like a place, even though it's like. It's a, a balance of warm and cool at the same time. Yeah, that's tr that's true. Because yeah. there's even green amongst the yellow going into the blue. That's oh, yeah, that's right. In yeah. between there. It's like kind of a pleasant painting to look at, even though the, the, su the subject matter is like it's chaos, crazy and violent. It's like. It's it doesn't like hurt your eye to look at it. It's like no, all it's, the colors look nice. It's definitely soft on the eyes, yeah. Yeah. And I do like the balance of the um the blue and the blue and warm. I mean blue yeah, the blue and the, the warm colors. And I like the the snake uh Yeah, the, I was like, the, yeah, there's that a cobra on his arm? Yeah, I think so. Even the cobra okay. I can't tell if the snake is uh, facing us or I was trying to figure I think it's face I think I'm it's facing about, away. I facing like. away because the cobra usually or the usually have their um on their hood, they have like the design on the back. That's on the back. Okay, cool. Yeah, I didn't realize it's like a back tattoo or something. <laughs> <I didn't know. laughs> yeah, go res a back tattoo. Why does? Yeah, is, I have a lot of questions about like what happened before this. Like, was there a bar argument and then she was like, "Let's go outside." Yeah, I and then I, she just fucked everybody up because the dude right here, the black guy, had a sword. Like he was ready. Oh, that's true. Like yeah. he was like, "All right, let's do this," and she was like, "So, so, so, so Yeah. And I don't know where the snake. <laughs> I feel like my based on the little I know about this deity, I think it's like she might have like seduced all these people. Like these, I guess I think it's two. Yeah, it's two guys. The head, the, the that that guy's head, she's holding. Oh, that's his head. Oh, yeah. Okay, 
So it's two guys. Okay. And I feel like she like maybe tried to seduce both of them and then decided to kill them. And then once she decided to kill them, the guy pulled out his sword and was like, all right, I got to defend myself, but he had no chance. Oh, Just no, based man. on like uh, her, I, th- I think there's something about her like being seductive and it's like sexuality and destruction at the same time. Oh, there's, that, something, that, there's something about that. That's her characteristic? I think so, yeah. I think there's something about her like that. Oh man, this looks like beef, man. Yeah. I don't know. Because it, it, it don't look like they was trying to fuck. It looks like they were like kicking it she showed up and it was like, I guess it, especially, you think you were God? Yo, we got yeah. you. He pulled his sword out and she was like, you're going to be my first example. So for Fwink, I'm going to put your head on a plate. Yeah. She probably even said it in the intro. I'm going to put your head on a plate. Yeah. He was like, bitch. So Swing, she was like, all right. And then his yeah. head was on a plate and the white dude was like, um, I'm going to throw the snake at you. And then she was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he has a snake. I feel like the snake might be affiliated. Was the snake on the plate? My guess is the snake is affiliated with Kali. Like, the snake is, like, in her entourage or something. Like, oh, so the snake was also around her neck. I feel and probably. Was, yeah. And she the probably threw kinda, the snake at him as I, the deflect and then hit the dude. Or maybe now that off. maybe now that he's dead, the snake's coming by to, you know, I don't know, eat it, eat him or something. It's like a, a victory Deion Sanders dance. Kind of, yeah. Like, hey, what's up? And then, yeah, I mean, I think it's like if she if she approached them wearing the ne- the the head necklace and the and the arm belt, I wouldn't really mess with this lady. Dude, if yeah, this, I wish, I if this like, yeah. woman showed up, yeah. I'd be like, we out of here. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised the black dude is still there. Well, hold on. He's got long hair. Maybe he's not a black guy. I think he's, yeah, he's I think Indian. He's Indian. I mean, yeah, he the the head looks Indian, but the body looks okay. Yeah, so I thought it was three different people. Like I yeah. thought, oh, it was a black guy. See, right, look right, look right. at that. That is Idris Alba. No, I know it's true. There is like a mismatch between the. Yeah, so I thought maybe the head came from some dude on the other side. Like the if you expand the picture, some other dude, but yeah, he is missing the head too. He's missing, yeah, for sure. It, uh, if the shoe fits. Yeah, the head fits the body. You know. But, but yeah, this but painting. Yeah, if it's a black dude, yeah, I, I'd be out. This There's painting's no sick, man. And I think the I think the yellow aura might be my favorite part of it. Yeah, because it's like even with the tongue out, she's like ha, yeah, like it's like a like an old dirty bastard. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, Brooklyn. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> like if you play shame on you, and you it yeah, would go. She, right. she does look like she's doing an ad lib <laughs> for sure. Uh, so do you have anything else you want to say about this painting before we move on to the poem? No, it's gorgeous, man. I like it. Sweet. Yeah, I'm glad you do. I want to see the expanded version. That's the full version of it? I think that's the full version, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Okay, next is a pretty different vibe. Acceptance by Robert Frost. Mm -hmm. So we can... So some options. I can read this, you can read this, or we can listen to a AI voice read it. Why are those the options? What's the other option that you want? (laughs) An AI voice? I, I guess since AI is taking over the earth let's go to skynet let's do it I like how she said safe. Yeah. She said safe. <laughs> safe. Uh, what do you think of this poem? Um, This poem is, uh, it just shows how. Well, nature, first of all, do you like it? Uh, yeah. I mean, at this stage in my life, I do like it. Okay. At I a different say. stage, you would have disliked it. At a different stage, I'd have been like, fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Except these nuts. Like, it'd have been like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. is And <laughs> at that stage, did you like any poetry? Or was all poetry like, I don't I don't deal oh, with Oh, no. I've, I mean, I read the Tupac poetry book. Okay, yeah. He had some good stuff in there. Like, Okay, I've, that's cool. Like, I've read poetry. Yeah. Uh, but this one, like, acceptance. I probably wouldn't have understood it like I do as I'm looking at it. It's. It just it's a thing of like nature doesn't give a shit about human emotion uh the universe 
everything moves on. Yeah. Like even the bird closing his eye and then the other bird being like, I got to get back to my nest. Yeah. Rather than being like, oh, my God, what happened? How can I help? And trying to stroke the other bird while it's dying. It died by itself. And then the other bird went back to his nest like, yeah. And then what was the line here? Let let what, what will be, be be. That is gangster. That is like, really nice. That yeah. is like, oof. Yeah, that's a very cool line. That That's one that the, the AI voice didn't really know how to read. She was like, let what will be be. Let what will be. Let what will be. <laughs> yeah. Like, but yeah, what? it's like, yeah, like a human would be like, let what will be be. That's yeah. a very cool. Yeah, it reminds me of like this um, Alan Watts. Like I listen to. It's, yeah, yeah, totally. It looks, it's like some Alan Watts would say. Like For he, sure. I remember he talked about life being a dance and he's like when you're when you just flow with it and you just walk confidently stepwise you just let things come to you yeah you know he's like like he said the universe he also said something like the universe life is not a problem to be solved it's life is something to be experienced so it's like when we look at issues and we're trying to constantly yeah. solve it and move it and we stay stagnant and it just becomes this thing so when, when you let it flow and you're like let what will be be yeah. it's like you just let it go and that's it's nice just like, yeah sometimes just, when i uh, no, i don't always do this but sometimes if i feel sad i'm like let me enjoy this sadness yeah you know what i mean like when you like feel what it is yeah i mean that's experience I, it truly i experienced i came to that during uh like a breakup that happened a while ago yeah like, it was just like it, it hit hard yeah. it was one of those breakups where you just like you just leaning on the fridge crying. Yeah. yeah. You're like, you're hungry. It was like, I don't know what to eat. <laughs> yeah. You just, I, so you just like, if you, I, I used to just push it and compress sure. it. And it's just like in your chest and you're talking to people and it just, and it, it comes out. <laughs> I'm sorry. It comes out the wrong way. Yeah. Like I was watching, I was at home by myself watching a Pixar movie. Yeah. And, and this fucking, something happened. They said something, and that sh- the, the the cry came <laughs> shooting out of me, and I was like, "I am glad I was by myself when yeah. this happened." But it that was a that was just a combination of things. Was it Cars too? No, it was <laughs> it was um. Uh, once it happened, I remember it happened twice. The big ones that people cry at up or up the beginning part of up, but to- the, Toy what, Story three. Oh, when they were about to die. Yeah, Whew, that was um, scary. I was like, "They gonna kill Woody?" Wally. Uh, Inside Out. I feel like some people cried at Inside Out. The first yeah. one or the second one? First one. The first one. Yes, there was. Yeah. The, there was a moment there. I remember that. Well, that was hurtful. But yeah. then, what recently got me was the new Inside Out, which Inside I, Out I didn't too. see. There, they introduce anxiety. Yeah, and anxiety is like trying to make Riley the main character popular, and is doing. It's like. Oh, it's not it's not having acceptance. It's yeah. overthinking every move that she makes. No, you have to hang out with these people. And you have to be with this person. And it was just so much that it just got overwhelmed. And you see, it does this thing where they they really ca- captured what anxiety looks and feels like. Yeah. Because there was a point where she was just kind of because you know they had that board that they control the emotions yeah. with. And it anxiety was just kept going. And it couldn't stop. Yeah. And it was just this tornado around the board. Yeah, and everyone yeah. is like trying to like, like, hey. And you see, it was like, I, 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 like she couldn't even, it's just stiff. And then on the outside, you see Riley, the character, just like, ah, oh, like she's just like yeah, trying yeah. to grip the world. And then she's just sitting there just going through it. And I was sitting there like, huh, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> and it just, it just yeah. shot out. And so, I'm just, it's just so, sometimes tears. the uh, the image I think of if I'm feeling super anxious is just like a swarm of like wasps or something like that. Just like the there's mm. a sense of like a swarm of like a bunch of little things like yeah. in my chest. That's what it feels like. It does. When yeah, it's, like, it, it's just like fuck? it's just yeah. stuff. Ha- like I yeah. I got to go to the gym. I got to I got to lift something. I got yeah I gotta, yeah yeah for sure. You got to get the I'm on a treadmill running hard. I'm yeah. just like trying to get it out. I'm like, yeah. what is this? And you just start feeling it. Like God damn. Yeah yeah. But yeah. Do you have a favorite line in this poem? Favorite line? I de- definitely the let what be. Let, let what will be be probably that, is that's the best definitely one. my favorite line. Yeah. Uh, I like oh, uh, the, the no voice in nature is heard to cry out loud. That's nice. Yeah. Because it's like uh. It's like the, it's like all the voices. Even though there are voices in nature that are crying for help or people, things are dying. Like nothing, 
They're not upset about the sunset. They're not upset about it. It's like, it's happened. Yeah. The universe moves. That's true. You have to accept change and we don't want to accept change. And that's where we lock up and things don't come to us. They don't flow to us. So it's just like nature is just like the seasons change. This bird died. This is happening. Yeah. It's dark now. It's dark now. It's light now. Just accept it. You can't stop what's going on. When you die, people will cry a little bit and then they will keep moving. If you don't do that idea or that thing that you've been talking about doing, life is still moving. Yeah. So either you do it or you don't. Nature and the universe doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. So do that shit. It's, right, yeah. It's like that could be a negative uh message, but it's like a positive. Yeah, it's it's yeah. A, it's like sandwiched in. It's right. accepting what it is. Yeah. Accept it. It's like this is what's happening. I like the just this is not the whole line, but just the the phrase the spent sun. I think that's an interesting way to talk about the sun at the end of the day. Yeah. The spent sun. Yeah, just spent all day beaming light. I know, yeah, it, and it like that. There is a. It feels true. It feels evocative of it, where it's like the sun's still in the sky, but you can look at it now. Mm-hmm. It's not as power. It's not as strong. Yes, yeah, like fading, and yeah. the moon is is shifting into its place. I like that. And then, let the night be too dark for me to see into the future. That's a cool idea, because it's like, I feel like it's saying that the bird can normally see into the future. Let the night be too dark to, for me to see into the future. Let the that's like the very the last night two lines. Let the night be too dark for me to see in the future. You know, I think it's, just, it's kind of a weird idea, but I, I, I also like the idea of like fully let like let it be dark. Fully, let's bring that in. I will accept the complete darkness. I, I like that. You know, I I see that, but also I see see let the night. To Safe the, now. Let <clears throat> the night be dark for all of me. Let the night be too dark for me to see, see into the future. future. Yeah, just so I don't have to try to control the outcome. Right, yes. Like, I don't want, like, if if you could actually see the future directly, you would try to control the elements to get to that. Matter of fact, what was that? Ah, Rick and Morty. Yeah. Do you remember the episode where he had the, the, the gym? Yeah. He had the stone? Yeah, yeah, I do, where he's yeah. like, if he turned this way, it was like, this is the outcome of his life. Yeah. He would end up with the girl, and he turned this way. Oh, no, he didn't. So he was just, like, constantly walking yeah, in the direction. Like, right. But he kept running into shit. <laughs> Because he was trying to control yeah. and life just got harder for him. So it's just like if like, yeah, I don't want to know what it is. Let's let me keep going and figure it out. Let the future be so dark that I can't see it. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So you like this poem overall? I like it. Yeah. Now in my life where I'm yeah. at. <laughs> yeah, right, before, right, right. I'll be like, Man, it's bullshit. Yeah, it's yeah. Shit. That's cool. Um, yeah, I like it though. Sweet. Okay. Uh yeah, and then us. you're in a movie that's coming out on Amazon Prime like this week. Yeah, on twenty fifth. Sweet. Yeah, yeah uh, can, you, can you talk about the movie a little bit? Uh, con job. That's a. It's a. I, it's it's my first movie that I've been in where I play one of the main characters. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. It was, it was exciting. Um, and we went to. It was at the Chelsea Film Festival. It did amazing. Uh, the director Ian Niles and um, boy Harrison they wrote and directed it. Uh, it has my boy Dean Edwards in it. Uh, we got Aaron Berg in it, yeah. and it was uh, oh, T.O. Flint, the homie. He was, pff, the whole cast is just fun. It, what's dope about this movie is the fact that it's like they wrote each character to have its own, like very individual. We are all like totally different people. Yeah, and it's like the directors they really let us fly. Us being all comics and everything, they really let me. Did they write the roles with you guys in mind? No, this script was actually written already, and oh, they were cool. trying to figure out who these characters were. Like they were like trying to cast folks. Yeah, and um, uh, Nile, I mean Ian, that's the guy in the red shirt. He, I, I had worked with a friend of his on another film, and some other things. I did like a, a an Intel commercial, and I did some stuff for like a SpaceX commercial, and then he, we were at a party, and I ran into him. And then we started talking. He's like, yeah, my, my guy said that you were good for this. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, cool. We all auditioned for it. And he's like, I like it. And then we started doing like film. We started filming it. And it just it just gelled. It worked out. So um, he really, they really gave me a lot of like space to improv. Like if you watch the movie, there's some things that I say that he doesn't know how to react to because yeah. he's not like a comic or an improv guy. He's right. like to the line. And yeah. I'm like, no, nah. it's like, da, da, da. He's like, Yeah. So it <laughs> it brings out that awkwardness of being like, this guy is going to say some wild shit. That's cool. 
So it's a, it's a fun movie. It's It keeps you on the edge. It's a lot of just like moving parts. This Sweet. person's doing this and then that happens. And it's like this hangover type of energy where it keeps smashing into moving the, the plot forward. But it's a fun movie, man. I'd say watch it. Coming out October 25th. It, uh, and it's on Prime, right? It's on Prime. Sweet. Yeah. So yeah, man. Awesome. Man. Yeah. And then uh, can you plug your Instagram again? Oh, my Instagram is M H A R T, the number three thousand, and that's my Instagram and also my uh, my TikTok. And yeah, if you have the opportunity to see Menu and do stand up, I recommend it. You're one of the funniest, honestly. I, oh, I really thanks, yeah. man. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank Th- you, man. Thanks for doing the show, man. Thanks for having me. This yeah, is fun. This is a great conversation. Yeah, yeah, appreciate back. that. Man. Yeah. Hello, dear.